Hi everyone, this is the second video of unit three. Uh, for the first video, we left off briefly mentioning the Alien and Sedition Acts. So that's what we're gonna leave off today. And we're gonna get into um, the election of 1800, which is commonly known as the revolution of 1800, which is what um, we discussed in class today, which is Wednesday, December 13th. So the Alien and Sedition Acts in May of 1798, Congress called for a rapid development of a naval force capable of defending the American coast against a French attack. Remember, we just talked about the XYZ affair with France last class and that quasi war we were having with France. Now, France was actually an unlikely danger um, because right now France was having this desperate struggle in Europe and the Jeffersonians feared that having this army to attack France could actually be used against them and the people. They saw how the Federalists deployed troops for the Whiskey Rebellion, for example. Right now, we did not have one standing army, just um, different state militias. Adams, who was president, was also one of our revolutionary leaders. And even though he was a Federalist, he worried about the dangers of a standing army. He said, this damned army will be the ruin of our country. Um, so you have a lot of things going on here with some infighting amongst the Federalists. Um, now, the Federalist Congress in the, in the summer of 1798 was fearful of foreign subversion, like, you know, French spies and all these people in our government um, making things worse. And they feared especially French immigrants and Irish immigrants. Both French and Irish were active and the Jeffersonians that opposed the Federalists. French and Irish immigrants were also Catholic. So there's a lot of um, anti-Catholicism going on here. Keep in mind today what you see in the news today about um, some of this anti-immigration and how it's a danger to our country, right? These ideas do not begin in our lifetime, right? They're here in the beginning of the country. It's something we've been dealing with for a long time. So this Congress did a few things to curb the flow of immigrants into the country, right? We call them aliens here. So there was a naturalization act that said in order to be a citizenship, you no longer don't have to um, live here five years. They increased it to 14 years. And the Alien Act authorized the president to expel immigrants whom he judged were dangerous to the peace and safety of the US. Okay, so the implications was, um, you know, are, were these against liberties? Well, sort of. They were, right? But then by July of 1798, Congress asked, um, sorry, passed another act, the Sedition Act. This was aimed directly at the Jeffersonians that were opposing the Federalists. This bill made it punishable by fine and imprisonment for anyone to conspire in opposition to any measure or measures of the government or to aid in any insurrection, riot, unlawful assembly, or combination. Fines in prison could also be given to those who dared to write, print, utter or publish any false, scandalous, or malicious writing that now, does this violate the freedom of the press? Does this sound familiar to things you hear in the news today? Okay, so under the terms of this Alien Act, the Secretary of State Pickering, who we mentioned last class, launched investigations um, intending to force all foreigners or immigrants to register with the government and he was happy to note that many immigrants were leaving the country. When the Sedition Act um, went forward, 25 people were arrested, 15 were indicted, and 10 were convicted. The majority of them were printers and editors that supported Jefferson. In Congress, Representative Matthew Lyon, who was an Irish-born um, Jeffersonian from Vermont, he became an embroiled debate over the Sedition Act. and he actually spat in the face of a Federalist opponent, Roger Griswold of Connecticut. Two weeks later, Griswold caned Lyon on the House floor. 
So later that year, Lyon was brought to court, fined $1,000, it's a heck of a lot of money at that time, and sentenced to four months in prison. His crime and why he was sentenced for that was to, in a personal letter, referring to President Adams as having an unbounded thirst for ridiculous, pomp, foolish, adulation, and selfish avarice. That's why he was sent to jail. So uh, I just spoke a bit about this here. You see the image of uh, the caning on the floor. We talk about how crazy Congress is today. Imagine if they were actually uh, being physically violent with each other. This cartoon is great. Look at the faces. Um, so think about this. Was the country off to a good start? Right? Look at this conflict. Were we violating our amendments of the freedom of press and the freedom of speech? How are we treating immigrants? Were we able to defend ourselves from other countries? Would we be able to peacefully switch parties? Here's a little bit about Matthew Lyon. Um, little side note there, he is actually the grandfather of a Confederate general um, of Kentucky. And an also pretty amazing thing is that he actually won re-election to Congress while he was in jail. So now we have people protesting the Alien and Sedition Acts. Um, Jefferson drafted the Kentucky Resolutions along with Madison, and they were passed on November 16, 1798, and it declared that the national government had violated the Bill of Rights. Uh, the Kentucky and Virginia Resolutions didn't get much support except for the South, but as it turned out, the Alien and Sedition Acts were not really enforced in the, in the South. Um, still, these resolutions showed the death um, the depth, not the death, of opposition to the Federalist program. Um, as the Federalists kept charging ahead, many Jeffersonians prepared for open conflict. Um, the Virginia Assembly, in fact, called for the formation of a state arsenal at Harper's Ferry. They reorganized their militia, and they had a special tax to pay for preparing for this. In Philadelphia, Federalist patrols walked the streets to prevent government or to protect um, government officials from angry crowds. Um, as a precautionary measure, President Adams smuggled arms into his residence. It seemed like the country um, was on the brink of upheaval. And another little side note, by the end of 1799, we have the death of President Washington. Now, of course, he's out of office for years now. Um, but that was, you know, a significant and symbolic uh, movement as well. Um, John Quincy Adams, who is not yet president, um, is sent to France to try to negotiate an, an accord. Um, and Adams was presented with this opportunity and Adams seized it. The end of war is peace and peace was offered me. He, he also concluded that his only chance of reelection was in fashioning a peace between both parties. Adams' cabinet was enraged because of uh, this accord um, and because of that, then Adams personally ordered them to depart and fired Pickering. So he fired his secretary of state, right? We're listening to more things that sound familiar again. By the year's end, um, everything was sort of peaceful. But then we have the revolution of 1800. Um, Federalists' advantage of the XYZ affair was now over. Um, the two Republican candidates um, were for Jeffersonian, who was the Republican's first choice, and Aaron Burr, their other nominee. Now, you didn't run with their vice president on the ticket at the time. Okay, um, They be, both had 73 votes. Adams had 65. So that meant our president was going to be either Jefferson or Burr. It was a tie vote, so the election was put into the House of Representatives, and a deadlock developed there. So there was a big struggle where the Federalists backed Burr. Um, however... Even though Hamilton was a Federalist, he did not like Burr at all. We all know that's eventually how he died, was from a, a duel with Burr, right? So Hamilton actually convinced the Federalists to support Jefferson. So the House finally elected Jefferson, 10 states to four, on the 36th ballot. That's a long time it took to get to the end of this. Um, and actually, the 12th Amendment was passed to prevent such a crisis again, um, which provided for separate electoral college ballots for president and vice president. 
So let's look a little bit about how 